Today we are at Ike's old work to assemble an engine that has been apart for 15 years. All right, Ike, we got a new big project in the works and a table full of greasy parts. What are we working with? Uh, we are working with insanity here. Why are we uh, putting this engine together? Because we didn't want to take apart a perfectly good bike. And it was basically $100. Yeah. So uh, what we have here is a BMW K100, an 85 model. It's got about 90 horsepower. We disassembled it because it had a knock about 15 years ago. We figured out what the knock was, ordered the part, and now we're going to be putting the engine back together. So the BMW K100 is known as the flying brick because of the engine orientation. How would you describe it? Vertically, Vertically challenged. challenged. So it's not an inline four like this, it's an inline four laid down flat. So first thing we need to do, take the crankshaft out, clean the journals, clean everything up, then we can start assembling. <laughs> Definitely some wear, but I don't see the 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 I don't know the copper, bronze, whatever whatever is underneath them when they get real worn. Block and crankshaft are all cleaned up. Ike's just pouring some assembly lube on. And we're torquing the, uh, let's see, the crank bearing main journal caps, something like that, to 37 foot pounds. all nice and clean. Uh, took the cams out, cleaned all the journals, uh, put some uh, assembly lube in and reassembled everything. Let's check on Ike. What's up, man? Uh, putting the case together. It's starting to look like something, man. Yep. You were saying while we were time-lapsing that this is no simple hey, engine. Oh, yeah. We're, uh, here at the shop, and uh, there's the retired man right there. What are you doing? <laughs> Working on the wife's car. <laughs> it never ends. Never though. ends. I try to get out, and they keep dragging me back. <laughs> All right. What were we talking about? Um, how it wasn't a simple engine. Russell oh. said. Russell oh. just said it's not a Briggs and Stratton. It's not a Briggs <laughs> and Stratton. Not a Briggs and Stratton. Yep. She. Uh, it's got a lot going on. That's for sure. And you notice that the oil filter is in the oil sump. I, I see that. This is the this is where the oil filter screws on. So you got to take the there, uh, there's pan a separate off. there's a separate hole in the bottom of the pan to get the filter out. And you need a special wrench to reach in there because the opening's not big enough. It's a BMW. B M W. <laughs> <laughs> Do I need to get you a little fine little extension? So uh, we actually, uh, or I actually made a little bit of a mistake. Yeah, we both made a mistake. Well, man. I mean, it's been 15 years since I've had this engine apart, and I forgot you have to take the camshafts out to remove the head. 
and I got old Johnny here to install the camshafts for me. All torqued down and everything. Yeah, and I installed the head, and I was like, oh no, I can't install the head bolts because the camshafts are in the way. So, my mistake, guys. So, don't make the mistake we did if you got a K100 that you're doing. Rebuilding. Yeah, you have to have the camshafts out to torque the or to install the head bolts. So we got our head bolts torqued down to 33 foot pounds. That was the second and final step. And now we're doing our- Reinstalling um, the camshaft. That's right. What do you call these things? The cam tower? Cam towers, cam. cam something like that. Yeah. Uh, seven foot pounds. So once we finish with this, we can uh, get a chain on it, right? We should be able to get the chain on it and uh, get the cam timing right. And then uh, there's not gonna be much left on this engine other than uh, putting it on the transmission yep. and uh, in Intake the cart. Exhaust, yep. Cams are back in. In time. In time, the chain is on, tensioner and everything. So from here, Valve cover, timing cover, timing cover, oil pan or the crankshaft right. cover, the oil pan, and I'm gonna say this is the oil pan right here, right, and whatever electronics, uh, alternator intake, uh, clutch. Sweet. So long day today, but we got a ton done. Don't we'll look see like you. It. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll see you next time. All right, man. We yep. have an oil filter. Yep. Should still have all the gaskets. Now we can proceed because the oil filter is in the sump, right? It's so pretty. And it's going to be covered up. Yeah. <laughs>so it's honestly dude i thought it would look funny when it was laid down sideways i think it's a very photogenic engine it's just I, it looks a little funny in the bike to me well we're not gonna worry about that no because it's not going in a bike uh it is sit, gonna be sitting a lot taller than i thought it would be if we have to we'll have it sitting down kind of in the floor Starting fluid. Yes. That's crazy, dude. This thing was sitting 15 years. Yeah, well, uh, we still got to put some fuel in it. Yeah. Yeah, so we didn't we didn't have quite enough gas to uh, I guess yeah to hear it run constantly. Uh, maybe the it's also possible the uh, fuel pump could be bad. That fuel was in that tank for 15 years, and to be honest, I didn't hear the fuel pump come on. But that won't be an issue. We can get it. Yeah, man. So. You want to get some more fuel and try it again? We can try with some more fuel.
Is that the fuel pump? We've got a bad fuel pump. I'm not surprised that... <laughs> I mean, when you take the thing apart for somebody, you expect them to pay you to put it back together, right? Well, I didn't think the thing was going to be sitting 15 years. If I knew that, I would have emptied the fuel tank. Yeah. But so, it is what it is. Yeah, man. So, um, we can either use this tank and buy a fuel pump for this tank, or buy like a standalone fuel pump and just provide our own kind of fueling yeah, system. Mount the fuel pump on the frame rail somewhere and then have a fuel cell or something. I think that's a better choice. Rather than that uh, fuel tank. But check it out. The color's great. But oh, I mean, yeah, just, man, I love this. Yeah. In fact, the... Uh, my buddy RC had this thing painted. It used to be kind of a burgundy reddish color. He knew the exact color, but he had it painted. And then uh, a buddy of mine actually painted that skull and the, the road on the tank. It's uh, very interesting. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely was painted probably in the 80s, I'm guessing. So either that or the early 90s. So anyhow, here's the fuel pump I'm just kind of bridging it and there's the test light it should light up when I hit the uh, starter you ready yep <laughs> man it just wants to run man. I know yeah it just wants to run so basically no fuel pump nope Other than a dead fuel pump, this was a total win. I mean, we took uh, an engine that was on a table upstairs for 15 years, put it all together, and made it run. And it's going to make for a killer platform to start a new build on, um, which we are starting very, very soon. Um, yeah, I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. As long as the, uh, the coronavirus doesn't get us on lockdown yeah i know we are like scrambling right now to get all our ducks in a row so that if we get locked down we can just crank stuff out for for two weeks or more if if we have all our supplies if we have all our ducks in a row exactly yeah. so uh otherwise i guess maybe we'll have a bunch of revivals and maybe some live, some streams. live streams yeah, and yeah all but that we stuff. really want to get this new build going before yeah. a potential lockdown so anyway i hope all you guys out there are staying safe from the rona uh, wash your hands. Uh, don't touch people. Six feet. You know the drill. You know the drill. Um, but yeah, BMW 1000, this is a big hoss. Sure, we could have uh, gotten a Habusa or something like that with a lot more horsepower, but I mean, what, what do I have, like $100 in this engine, maybe? Yeah, Habusa would have been like five grand. I, I don't know how much a Habusa would have been. It would have been way cooler, a lot more power and stuff, but we're kind of working on a budget it's a hundred dollar engine guys yeah dude 90 so, horsepower i can live with that yeah and i mean fuel injected shaft driven water cooled it's got you know it's ticking all the right boxes yeah. the only thing it doesn't have is reverse but anyway yeah reverse would be nice but yeah. man how would you feel if we bought a Hayabusa, something high dollar and blown it up out there at, at oh, busco it'd be or something tragic it'd oh be it would so be sad. terrible yeah Hundred bucks. Hundred bucks. Very true. With with a gasket kit, I mean, if it, it blows up, I'm gonna be hurt, but I'm not gonna be like, no. So anyhow, it's cool. Well, thanks for watching this video, everybody. Facebook and Instagram at Cars and Cameras Reviews in between videos. Visit our website, Cars Cameras, to support our future projects by picking up a T-shirt or a sticker. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Ike, lead us out. Sure. Check me out at Isaac. It'll be fine. Y'all be safe out there.